Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I have a bit of a different video than normal. Today I want to talk about uh, an excellent author and a good friend named Howard Andrew Jones. Howard Andrew Jones is the author of the fantastic Chronicles of Hanovar series that include the books Lord of a Shattered Land and The City of Marble and Blood and the third uh, recent release that comes out this month, Shadow of a Smoking Mountain. And uh, for those of you who are unaware, Howard was recently diagnosed with multifocal glioblastoma, which uh, from what I understand is a form of brain cancer. And uh, we do not know how much longer we will have with Howard, but I wanted to make this video talking about why we as fans love his writing style, why we love his characters, why we love the world of Hanovar, and why we love Howard Andrew Jones. And Howard, if you're watching this, we really appreciate everything you've done in the series, and we appreciate so much of your connection with your fans and your uh, just excellent writing style. And so how this video is going to work is I am going to uh, hand it off to a couple of other people. Some of them may be familiar to you as some of them are booktubers. We've also got an author or two present. And so uh, you, I'll hand it off to them and they'll each talk for a few minutes about what they love about this series and how Howard's writing. And then I'll close it up at the end. What up nerds? My name is Leslie Smith and I have the channel The Nerdy Narrative. Jonathan reached out to me and asked if I would share what I loved the most about the writing style of Howard Andrew Jones and about the character of Hanovar in particular. I couldn't pass up the opportunity to gush about one of my favorite sword and sorcery fantasy series I've read to date. I'll start with the writing style. Now bear in mind, I've only read the Chronicles of Hanovar by this author currently, so that is what is reflected by my thoughts and opinions in that regard. Large scale world building is the top of the list, followed by a magic system that's both mysterious and unique characters that I would die for, and the legendary story arc that is the Chronicles of Hanovar. The only thing I found wanting about the two books I've read in the series so far is that I was left wanting more. Fortunately, I have the arc for book three sitting on my Kindle, so I'll be able to dive in very soon. To tie in with the world building and the writing, is the narrative style choice Howard Andrew Jones used to approach this series. It's called sequential storytelling. This is a format that combines different stories into a single unit. It's kind of like a short story collection where all of the stories are connected and move the plot forward. They just have different settings, protagonists, and conflicts. To talk about the character of Hanovar in particular, Hanovar is just one of those rare fictional characters that actually inspires me, actively inspires me to want to be a better person, to look out for my fellow man. This character embodies passion, hope, freedom. His mission, his one mission is to save all of his people to free them from the yoke of slavery in the Durban Empire. And the Chronicles of Hanovar, essentially all of these stories are him going throughout this empire and setting his people free. And he's doing it by earning the respect of the people he encounters, earning the respect of the enemy. Whether it's a dervish soldier, whether it's a dervish council member, he earns their respect and he does all of this with the intention of not hurting or killing anyone if it can be prevented. With everything that he has suffered and has seen done to his people, Hanovar could have chosen hate. He could have chosen to harbor a grudge and ill will. Instead, he chooses to be an example to others. It's remarkable. Truly, I would recommend this series to anyone that enjoys fantasy, epic fantasy, not just sword and sorcery, but if you just want to read a good inspirational book, The Chronicles of Hanovar is definitely not going to disappoint. I don't believe much in coincidence. I believe that we are meant to meet who we are meant to meet in life. 
And it's because of that that I believe that my meeting of Howard Andrew Jones was something akin to divine providence. I met him about a year ago through Bain Books, and they asked me to read and review his books and possibly even interview him for my channel, which I did. In the wake of abandoning IPs and franchises that I had read for decades and decades, and uh, that took a creative direction that I found profoundly disappointing. I was looking for new stories by new authors, something that could fill that void. And the Hanover Chronicles filled that void perfectly. Here was a sword and sorcery tale that was epic, but still somewhat grounded enough. Uh, you had a main character who was believable and strong and cunning, but also vulnerable enough to believe that uh, the one wrong misstep uh, might be his undoing. And in Howard Andrew Jones, I found an author who had a prose that was woven expertly with his love and knowledge of history, uh, combined with his you know, masterful prose that he writes. It's such an amazing thing to read. And Howard is not just an amazing author to read as a reader, but as an author, he's the kind of author that I want to learn from that makes me feel I can do better. I've been very proud to know Howard over the last year and our correspondence behind the scenes has always been friendly and cordial. Uh, he's always been a complete professional, a, a wonderful gentleman, and I think he always came across as very humble and grateful that uh, readers like myself were such adamant fans uh, and, and passionate fans about his work and his books. And that was always something that, you know, I felt I tried to apply myself as well. You know, I, uh, Howard is an author that I very much looked up to. Howard is one of those once in all generation authors who knows how to weave the strengths of storytelling with the human pathos and adventure that we all loved growing up with. And you can't say that he will not leave his mark on this world because as long as I'm alive, Howard Andrew Jones, his books, and the man himself will be on my shelf, in my mind, and in my heart as well. Howard, I love you, man. Godspeed, and God bless. Hey guys, Melissa Oltoff here, and I wanted to tell you how much I loved The Chronicles of Hanover by Howard Andrew Jones. Um, not just because Howard is a delightful person and honestly one of the coolest people I have ever met because he is a phenomenal author and he has he has this ability to just draw you into the story. He makes his characters feel like real people that you want to root for and that you want to succeed or in the case of his very well-written bad guys uh, that you want to see what them you know get what's coming to them. Um, so when I had uh, Casey Azell and Jason Cordova both tell me girl you need to read Lord of a Shattered Land. I tend, I tend to listen to them. And I loved it. I loved it specifically because it was not what I expected. You have this character, Hanavar, who has lost everything. He's lost his home, his family, his city, his people. Mo most of his people are gone. And it's not a story about revenge. It's not a, a bloodthirsty rampage across the countryside. It's a story about hope. And that that hope is what really drew me in because as far as Hanavar has fallen, as, as dark as his, as, as his night has become, he still has hope and he sets out to do the right thing. And that carries through books two and three, um, that message of hope that no matter how bad things get, um, we can hold on to that. And, you know, good can triumph over evil and, and the good guys can win. And I just, I loved it. Um, I loved his character so much. And one of the other things I really enjoyed was that dry sense of humor that Howard would just sneak in at the appropriate moments. Um, I, the last time I talked with Howard, I told him like, man, this part, oh man, I cackled so hard I was getting side-eyed by like half of my coworkers when I'm in the office at the day job. And he wanted to know like, well, 
one, that's awesome. And two, tell me, tell me other things. Cause as authors, we love hearing about like what makes you laugh. Right. And Howard, the elephant cookies at the end of book two, I laughed. I laughed so hard, man. It was amazing. Uh, goose honk achieved. So if you have not read the Chronicles of Hanover yet, I strongly recommend you're not going to be sorry. You know, this isn't quite how I pictured my first time appearing on your channel, Jonathan. <sighs> Where to begin with Howard? Do we want to talk about the preservation work he did on Harold Lamb and the celebration of classic sword and sorcery authors from Michael Shea to David Drake? His work as a columnist at Blackgate? His work as the editor of Tales of the Magician's Skull, his Debir and Assam short stories, or, of course, Hanavar, which we'll get to in a minute. Do we want to talk about how in a genre where so much of the field is divided and fighting among themselves, everybody from Larry Correa to Martha Wells, from Hugo winners to Dragon nominees, agrees that Howard is one of the best of us all? That be it his truly awful impressions of Ringo Starr or his love of Jiro Dreams of Sushi, he can talk about almost anything with a passion that puts a smile on your face. But every time we talk, the first thing he does, be it business or marketing or working through a plot point, he always asks, how's your boy? And he always cares when he asks that everyone I know who's met him is better for knowing him, that everyone who's read his work adores it, comes away as excited about it as he is. How are all gonna be so much poorer without him? And yet his work will be as much of a bright light in all of our lives as Howard has been. I thought a lot about what story I wanted to share with everyone about Howard and what better place to begin than where Hanavar began? I read one of his short stories in Tales of the Magician's Skull, and not long after I started at Bain, I asked if there was a full novel to go with it, and rather nervously he told me there was. He sent it in, it made its way eventually onto my desk, and to tell the truth, I was nervous that I might have to be the one to send the rejection letter, and instead, as everyone who's read Lord of a Shattered Land can tell you, it was electrifying. I still remember when I got to write the summary and send it off to Tony Weisskopf, who, to her credit, was quick to tell the newbie editor, try to rein it in a little. Is there, we're gonna have to be very fair, very judgmental, and instead, I still remember the call 24 hours after I told her exactly, I will read this book wherever it is published and I will mourn if it doesn't have the Bane logo on the side of it. And less than a day later, she calls me and says, I'm 50 pages in, is it all this good? And I said, ma'am, it gets better every single story. And a day later she calls back and is like, okay, I just finished, get me Howard's agent. I need to make an offer. Less than a week later, Howard Andrew Jones was a Bane author and Hanavar, a Bane series. And I will spend the next 40 years in publishing proud of the small role I helped bringing Hanavar to life. And I at least wanted to share with all of you the line that hit me like a bombshell and sold the series because I've been thinking about it a lot given the recent news about Howard. Page 44, for those of you who have a copy. Not for all the treasures of the world would he have told her what it looked like now. Instead, he spoke of Valanus of his memory. It is. In the morning, the priestesses of the sea temple sound the horns to greet the sun's emergence from the waves. The light gleams in the spires of the silver towers, so bright they seem aflame. The buildings climb steeply along the shore gilt with the bright tiles of blue and red and gold. The water of the fountains rises along the wide avenues. People from all the corners of the world walk her streets, bringing their wares to sell and trade. 
At night there is music, and folk gather at the stages to hear the stories of our people. And women can really be warriors there, she asked. Yes, but only the brave and clever ones, like you. Why are you crying? Her weakening voice sounded critical. Warriors don't cry. They do when a hero dies, he said. She must have liked that, because her last expression, before it blanked in death, was a smile of approval. I actually cried the first time I read that. Still hits me like a bombshell even now. I know there will be a lot of tears when we lose Howard, but he left one hell of a legacy. And may that be a bright light for many years to come for all his friends, his readers, and genre fans for many, many years to come. Howard, I love you, brother. Thank you for everything. I don't know what all I can say in addition that isn't just retreading everything, but Howard's writing style just works so well for me. The way that he writes uh, kind of historical type stories, stories rooted in actual history like Carthage and Rome, the way that he is able to write stories that uh, connect with me even though I'm not like the characters that he writes, the way he's able to bring back a classic feel but not but also have modern sensibilities at the same time. The way that Howard is able to make a story which is basically episodic fly through and keep me hooked with every single chapter is just incredible. And also, the way that Howard has been so kind to his fans, including myself, has been so um, uh, helpful in the sword and sorcery community, How uh, what a great ideas person he is, uh, getting to talk with him about stuff has been fascinating, and then also what a great friend he is. Howard, if you're watching, we love you. We are hoping the best for you. We know that you might not get to finish the series, but regardless, what you've given us has been fantastic, and we love it, and we will continue to be singing the praises of the Chronicles of Hanovar and the writing of Howard Andrew Jones. Howard, we love you, and we keep praying for uh, healing and for comfort for your family. <laughs>